Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub. And today's topic is how one can decide standard concentration and sample concentration for nitrosamine analysis. See, regulatory guidelines can help us in understanding the acceptable intake to understand the acceptable limit. But finally, method developer has to decide on appropriate concentration for standard and the sample. So in this uh, video, we will try to understand this complete process and I will walk you through five different steps by which you will completely understand how one can decide the concentration for nitrosamine standard and sample. So let us begin with the uh, step number one. So you have to first understand what is your LOQ requirement. So if you look at the EMAS guideline, you will find there could be three different possibilities of selecting an LOQ. Let us say you want to omit the nitrosamine impurity from the specification, option number one. In that case, your LOQ should be less than 10% of the acceptable limit. We will talk about this calculation of acceptable limit, but this is first important information. The second information is, would you like to avail the skip testing? In that case, your LOQ of nitrosamine should be less than 30% of your acceptable limit. Or in case if you don't want to avail omission of the specification or not the skip testing, you can go for the routine testing and in that case, LOQ should be at least less than acceptable limit of that particular nitrosamine. But for this example, let us assume that you want to go with the LOQ of less than 10% because you want to explore the possibility of omitting the nitrosamine impurity from the specification itself. This is the first step you need to think of. What is your LOQ requirement? Okay, and in this case, we assume that you want to go with the 10% as the LOQ requirement. 10% means what? 10% of your acceptable intake of that particular impurity. The step number two, The step number two is uh, estimate the allocation. So you have to practically assess the concentration of your nitrosamine, which can give the LOQ, uh, uh, you know, the expected requirements. For example, signal to noise ratio. So you injected a solution of, let us say, NDMA, which is again one of the nitrosamine impurity standard concentration of 0.3 ppb, and you found that the signal to noise ratio is 100. I have just given the hypothetical example over here now. And finally, you identified then the 0.3 ppb gives the signal to noise ratio of around 10. And this is what your requirement for LOQ. So now you define that, you estimated your LOQ, that is 0.3 ppb of NDMA. The step number two is completed. Let us move on to the step number three. The step number three is estimate the as such or working level concentration for the standard which is NDMA in this example. I hope you remember that your LOQ is 0 0.03 ppb as per your step number 2. But what is your expected requirement of that LOQ should be less than 10% of your acceptable intake. If you look at your first very step one, isn't it? With a, we said that you want to go with the LOQ value of less than 10% of the acceptable limit. So this LOQ, which is 0 0.03 ppb, should be less than 10% of your acceptable intake, acceptable limit. But how much less? Is it 9% or 8% or 7%? Let us assume that by calculating the risk and the possible variabilities from instrument to instrument, you decided to go with uh, the 5% of the acceptable limit. 5% of the acceptable limit. Now it's very important to understand. NDMA at 5% of its acceptable limit is going to have the as such concentration of how much? 0 0.03 ppp. See, this is your decision you decided to go with 0 0.03 ppb as the LOQ concentration and this should be a 5% of your acceptable limit. So what is the 100% of the acceptable limit then? Just do the cross multiplication and you will understand that it becomes 0 0.6 ppb. 
Now this is the step where you got your as such concentration of NDMA standard and that is now 0.6 ppb. So you should have the 0.6 ppb as your as such working level concentration so that the 5% which is your expected level of limit of quantitation be going to become 0 0.03 ppb. I hope you understand <clears throat> how I define the as such working level for a nitrosamine impurity standard which is 0.6 ppb now. Let us move on to the step number 4. The step number 4 is going to help us in defining the acceptable limit. If you look at the EMAs or ESF days or any another guideline, you will find that there are certain acceptable intake given for the nitrosamine impurities. Let us assume that we are uh, working for NDMA method development. So its acceptable intake is 96 nanograms per day. You can read into the guideline. Now what is the, see to again calculate the acceptable limit, you should know the maximum daily dose of the API. So in this case, let us assume that we are working for metformin tablet and you must understand the maximum daily dose of the metformin hydrochloride. It is uh, 2550 milligram, let us say. So what is the acceptable limit for NDMA in terms of PPM now? It is going to be 96 nanogram divided by, uh, I think it is uh, got hidden in here now. It is 96 nanogram divided by 2550 that becomes 0 0.0376 PPM. Let us uh, round the figure and uh, let us assume that it is 0 0.04 PPM now. So we got the acceptable limit for NDMA in case of a metformin tablet, which is 0 0.04 ppm. I hope you are clear until step number four. Now the last step number five is very important. So how to define the sample concentration? How to define the sample concentration? So this is the calculation formula I always use to define the sample concentration. So you have to first understand what is the as such concentration of the impurity divided by the sample concentration that we are going to define now into 10 raised to 6 for what purpose because our acceptable limit is expressed in terms of the ppm part per million and that's the reason of using this 10 raised to 6 factor and that this calculation formula will help me to get the acceptable limit in terms of the ppm so what is my acceptable limit in terms of the ppm please understand in this calculation formula you know the as such standard concentration you also know the acceptable limit in ppm from the step number four so it is 0 0.04 ppm if you do not know you can you know rewind the video and check it so acceptable limit is 0 .0, 0 .0, 0 0.04 ppm now right and what is the standard concentration by the way do you remember that it is 0 0.6 ppb it is 0 0.6 ppb. So I have just converted this 0 0.6 ppb into ppm by dividing the value by 1000. So that will result into 0 0.0006 ppm. And then I assume that my required sample concentration is x ppm. Again, the 10 raised to 6 is just like here now. And then the 0 0.04 ppm, which is my required acceptable limit of NDMA in metformin. So if I rearrange the above equation, I can easily understand that the point zero, uh, you know, the sample concentration is 15,000 ppm. How much it is? The standard, the sample concentration is going to be 15,000 ppm. So with this easy uh, five different steps, you know, I could able to define what is the as such standard concentration for nitrosamine like NDMA which is 0 0.6 ppb in this example and what is the standard concentration for metformin which is for 15,000 ppm. I hope you must have now understand how one can easily define the standard and sample concentration for nitrosamine testing. Thank you so much.